Arts. Once again, here is Raul Midon. Maybe I'm crazy, I can hear you but you seem so far away. Maybe I'm lazy, or maybe we got lost. Somewhere in between the moments can't remember When the changes came and made this thing so sad So if you're gonna leave, that's okay But if you're gonna stay, then let me say I wanna get it back, the love we had Before it gets too late If you're gonna leave, that's okay but if you gon' stay, then let me say I wanna get it back, the love we had Before it gets too late Don't let it get too late Time is illusion And yesterday can be so far away Here's the confusion or maybe we will find that somewhere out beyond the stars or in our hearts there is a method to this madness that pertains so if you're gonna leave that's okay but if you're gonna stay then let me say i want to get it back the love we had before it gets too late if you're gonna leave it's okay, but if you're gonna stay, then let me say I wanna get it back, the love we had before it gets too late It's getting to the point that I, I wanna do it right this time I wanna hold you in my arms, I never wanna say goodbye Again If you're gonna leave, baby, won't you stay? I wanna get it back before it gets too late. If you're gonna leave, baby, won't you stay? I wanna get it back, the love we had before it gets too late. If you're gonna leave, then that's okay. Oh, I want to get it back, the love we had before it gets too late. If you're going to leave, that's okay. But if you're going to stay, then let me say, I want to get it back, the love we had before it gets too late. Don't let it get too late. was If You're Gonna Leave that we just saw off of Raoul Midon's debut album called State of Mind. Um, when you were a kid, I was listening to this interview that you did uh, on NPR, and you were talking about how when you were a kid, many people were telling you you couldn't do this or that because you were blind. Mm -hmm. And yet you pursued your dreams, as did your brother, who is also blind and works as an engineer at NASA. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, where did the strong belief in yourself come from? I think it came from, from family, you know, especially from from our, our dad and our grandmother, who were the two big influences in, in our lives. You know, there was just always this, um, not just feeling, but, but um, we discussed it all the time, that we can do whatever we want to do, that we're not limited by what people think we can do, that the world is sort of a, a filled with a thousand possibilities. And where do you think your parents and your grandmother um, got this philosophy and this strength as well to guide you both through this? I don't, you know, I'm not sure. I think maybe it came from their family. Um, uh, I think it, it's, uh, it's interesting. I'm, I'm not sure where, where, where they got it. Did you ever second guess yourself or did you always have that confidence? Oh no, there's, there's always second guessing. I mean, I, uh, first winter I was in New York, I was, uh, very depressed. I mean, we were running out of money, and, and uh, that's state of mind. The, the song 
which is the title of, of the record, actually came out of, you know, fairly severe depression. I was just like, what did I do? I made a mistake. I left, you know, fairly comfortable situation in Miami. Why did I come here? You know, I'm not, you know. And so, absolutely, there's, there's, uh, there's, there are times when you are, you know, you're not sure whether you did the right thing or not. Absolutely, but how did you learn to control your own state of mind? Well, I think, you know, for me, maybe it was a, a, a consequence of a lot of things. Perhaps the disability, uh, you, you learn to, uh, first of all, you learn that, that people are important right away. You learn that, that there's an interdependence, which everybody has, except people can sort of trick themselves into thinking that it doesn't exist. But as a blind person, you learn that people and that love and, and support is very important right away. And so um, you learn to look at a, a situation that maybe could be looked at as, uh, as terrible as say, wait a minute, this is, this is also a good situation. There, there are things as a blind person that I don't have to see. And that sounds strange, but it, it, it is a blessing. Um, so, I, you know, you learn, I, I, for me, I think that's how, one of the things that happened. It, but when did it start to turn around for you? When did things start to pick up? Well, you know, it, it's, uh, I remember one thing that happened. Uh, I was playing a show at Joe's Pub, and I didn't even realize how cool it was that I was playing a show at Joe's Pub <laughs> in New York, which is just a, uh, but I was playing a show there, and, uh, uh, mm -hmm. A producer of shows came up to me, Danny Capillion, and he said, how would you like to play Carnegie Hall? And I said, I would like to do that someday. That's a goal that I have. And he goes, how about next month? And uh, I did a, a one That's song amazing. for a, a show called The Movie Music of Spike Lee. And, you know, a year after I had moved to New York and gone through a lot of things and thought maybe this was a mistake, I'm standing up singing at Carnegie Hall. That's incredible. So unbelievable. I mean, another highlight must be also getting Stevie Wonder to play the harmonica on the album. How did that happen? Uh, well, um, we were joking around because the album was going so well and everybody was feeling so good. And I was, I, I said to Arif, uh, "Why can't we get Stevie on the record as a joke?" And he said, "I will call him." And he just picked up the phone and and called and got Stevie Wonder's assistant. And so they uh, said they they agreed to listen to the material and i send them we sent them a couple of songs i also wrote them a letter in braille uh, i wrote stevie a letter in braille uh, reminding him that he had met my twin brother who works at nasa a couple of years before we made the record at a technical conference in uh, in los angeles and stevie was so impressed with with my brother that he invited him over to the house so i wrote him this letter and uh I got a call about a day before mastering, hey, come and um, come, come to the studio now because Stevie Wonder's ready to record on the record. Having experiences like that, does it make you believe in fate? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know fate or, I, I believe in a certain amount of creative visualization. I guess that's kind of a new age term, but I do believe in that. I believe that there are certain things that you're given, certain cards that you're given, but that there are, you know, there's a, um, a little bit of play there in terms of what you do with what you're given. You uh, maybe that just helps me to, you know, to keep doing what I'm doing because I believe that I have some control over what happens. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, we're actually running out of time, unfortunately, but thank you very much for stopping by. Well, thank you so much for having me.